Homotherium was a genus of scimitar-toothed cats. Although they were similar in appearance to Smilodon, Homotherium's canines were shorter and likely covered by the lips, and their body was more conducive to chasing prey rather than ambushing it. In size, they could be comparable to today's male African lions. They weighed around 190 kilograms, or 420 pounds, and stood at 1.1 meters, or 3 feet 7 inches at the shoulder. Homotherium was widespread across the globe, inhabiting both North and South America, as well as Eurasia and Africa, between 4 million and 12,000 years ago. Their presence on each of these continents varied through the Pliocene and Pleistocene, first becoming extinct in Africa 1.5 million years ago, Eurasia 30,000 years ago, and North America 12,000 years ago. It is thought to have had the largest geographical range of all saber-toothed cats. However, it is not clear whether they occupied these locations simultaneously. Although they are often compared to Smilodon, the lineage that was to become Homotherium diverged from that of Smilodon around 18 million years ago. Could these large cats survive nowadays? Would there be enough prey? Would there be suitable habitat? And could they survive today's climate? Homotherium had physical characteristics, which suggested that it hunted in open environments, chasing its prey over significant distances. It had reduced claws, more slender limbs than the ambush predator Smilodon, and a sloping back. They were unlikely to be as fast as today's cheetahs, which sprint over short distances, but they were more likely to run over longer distances. As well as the sloping back, Homotherium had powerful hind legs and a powerful lumbar region, which made it capable of pulling down significant loads. In fact, it seems from fossil evidence that Homotherium attacked and killed youngsters of the elephanted Dinotherium on the African continent and baby mammoths in North America. As well as being similar in size to modern-day lions, Homotherium was also a social hunter like lions. This behavioral adaptation would have enabled them to take down large prey, including juvenile mammoths. Their elongated canines would have made securing such large herbivores easier than it is for today's lions, as they would have been able to slice through thick hide. From the shape and structure of their skull, scientists believe that Homotherium had an incredibly powerful bite force that enabled it to bite down on its victims and hold on. Unlike with Smilodon, however, there are fewer fossils of broken canines from Homotherium. This suggests that the large cats hunted as a group, completely immobilizing their prey before delivering the fatal bite with their characteristic canines. From fossilized mammoth remains, scientists have concluded that Homotherium often dismembered its kill and then dragged the parts of the carcass back to the caves, where it could be well guarded from the likes of dire wolves and American lions and eaten at leisure. Judging by the wear and tear of the teeth, Homotherium did not consume bone like other large carnivores of the time, only the flesh of the animal. Genetic analysis of Homotherium fossils has found links with genes that are linked to diurnal behavior and a cursorial lifestyle. Although Homotherium appeared to have excellent eyesight and good night vision, it is thought that they hunted during daylight hours and were adapted to running. From studying the carbon-stable isotopes and microware on fossilized Homotherium teeth, scientists have been able to determine that these large cats preferred prey from open habitats. They could tell from the data that Homotherium's prey grazed grasses rather than vegetation found in forested habitats. In one of the cat's dens, fossilized remains of baby mammoths, approximately two years old, were the most common prey species. But it is also thought that they fed on bison, and horses that graze the open grasslands of North America. If Homotherium was to survive today, its most likely prey would be bison in North America and Eurasia, and young elephants in Africa. It seems that they targeted larger animals so, although there may be an abundance of prey species like deer and antelope across the continents, Homotherium almost certainly wouldn't hunt these. And considering bison are protected in both America and Europe, they wouldn't be suitable prey for these cats. In Africa, there are some areas where elephants are cold due to the damage their large numbers cause to habitats and surrounding farmland. But in other areas, they are fiercely protected. Maybe Homotherium could hunt elephants where officials are trying to keep their numbers down, but it would be a precarious existence. 
Other predators may now compete with Homotherium on the African plains. But if they did hunt there, could Homotherium survive the climate nowadays? And if they hunted elephants in Africa, is the habitat suitable for them? During the lifetime of the Homotherium genus, they endured a vast range of temperatures. This change in climatic conditions was gradual, unlike climate change happening today. This allowed species to adapt and change, or move and relocate. Overall, the Pliocene was a transition from the warm Miocene period to the cold Pleistocene epoch. The conditions during the Pliocene resulted in more seasonal climates and colder and drier regions across the globe. Midway through the Pliocene, however, there was a significant rise in global temperatures, 2 to 3 degrees Celsius warmer than they are today. As temperatures cooled once more towards the end of the Pliocene, the vegetation and flora changed. Whilst deciduous trees proliferated and coniferous forests covered much of the north, tropical forests became limited to a narrow band around the equator, and many tropical species died out. Woodlands and forests gave way to open grasslands and savannas, and deserts appeared in Africa and Asia. The changing climate had a significant impact on the flora and fauna. Habitats changed, and species had to adapt or die out. Following the Pliocene, the Pleistocene was signified by much colder temperatures. As much as 30% of Earth's landmass was covered by glaciers and ice sheets extending to mid-latitudes. Temperatures were between 12 to 20 degrees Celsius, or 53 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit colder near the ice sheets than they are today. The Homotherium genus survived this huge range in climate. And not only that, but it is thought that they lived in a range of habitats too. Although evidence suggests that Homotherium predominantly resided in open habitats where its prey was abundant, there is also evidence of some species living in dense vegetation. Its ability to thrive in a range of habitats and under a variety of climatic conditions makes this genus of big cat exceptionally hardy and suggests that it could survive in parts of the world today. Homotherium appears to have been a genetically diverse genus of big cats. Individuals from different populations likely traveled great distances, increasing gene flow throughout the global population. It occupied a broad geographical range and likely inhabited a few different habitats. Its behavior made it unique amongst other large cats of its day, such as its diurnal and social hunting techniques. This allowed it to occupy its niche without the need for competition with other predators during the Pliocene and Pleistocene epochs. Although Homotherium was a hugely successful prehistoric predator, it didn't make it to the present day. This may be surprising considering the unique adaptations it had, which gave it so many advantages. But these adaptations that once made the genus highly successful may have ultimately led to its downfall. They were highly adapted to capturing large prey, and as the large herbivores died out following the Quaternary Extinction Event, Homotherium was unable to adapt its hunting techniques to take advantage of the smaller prey species remaining. It is because of this that we believe Homotherium would not be able to survive today. They could likely survive today's climate, although the rate at which climate change is happening far exceeds anything the big cats have experienced in the past, so this could be challenging. They would also likely find enough habitat in some of the wilderness that remains today. But without large prey available for them to hunt, they wouldn't be able to successfully feed. Without the ability to switch their hunting strategies to take down smaller prey, we believe that they couldn't survive nowadays. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.